Good evening. You know, I had, a, I had a bunch of people sort of all worried that we weren't going to have an audience, we wouldn't have our judges. And I said, no, these are entrepreneurs and people of, who support entrepreneurs. They don't, what, a little rainstorm getting our way? Nah. So I am incredibly grateful you're all here. You made it through the, the uh, tornado there. And uh, we are excited uh, for this evening. So thank you all for, for making it out tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I want to welcome you all to the second annual Wolfpack Launch You Final Pitch Competition presented by Dr. Bobby and Lori Kent Savoie. I want to start with a few acknowledgments first. Uh, first, I want to thank Dr. Bobby and Lori Kent for this generous contribution and support that supports the ongoing success of this program. Thank you very much. I also want to thank the 19 professionals who served as speakers, sharing their expertise in everything from legal foundation to branding the 33 business professionals and alumni who contributed their time to mentor the founders and their teams, and in particular, Mike Eckert, CEO of the New Orleans Angel Network, for his help in securing the mentors. And I want to thank the 15-member professional advisory board of the Center for Entrepreneurship and Community Development. Without all of your generous contributions in time and treasure, this could not be half as successful as it is. So I want to thank all of you at the very top. Thank you very much. Um, that said, entrepreneurship is all about navigating change successfully. Loyola, like many other higher educational institutions, is navigating a lot of change. And tonight, we are honored to have our new president, Dr. Xavier Cole here. Please will help me welcome the president of Loyola University. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I just swam in from Marquette Hall. It, it really is a testament to have you all here, this full room, uh, even after a stormy evening. It was a pretty momentous day for the university, for those of you who also attended the Mass of the Holy Spirit, uh, really marking the start of our year. It was a beautiful ceremony for those who weren't there. Please check it out online. Um, but we're happy that you're here. Just want to say a few things. First of all, when I heard about the generous uh, naming of the gift by Dr. Bobby Savoie and his wife, Lori Kent, First thing I thought is $30,000. And I started sketching after the Master Holy Spirit, uh, thinking about what idea might I enter into this competition. <laughs> and I thought that not practical and I do not want to take away opportunities for students. What you're doing um, to put yourselves out here in your ideas uh, for critique, um, for vetting, um, for possible success is a very courageous thing. It is the thing that we hope that we're teaching you uh, in our classrooms and our mentoring and, and all the time we spend with you to have some courage to share those ideas. But also I hope that uh, as you're forming these ideas, we're also talking to you about issues of social justice, that keeping our mission in mind as you develop uh, ideas that help advance people forward. I understand that there was a pitch person last year, I'm not sure if they were the winner or not, of the safety, what was it? The, the safety pouch? Yep. Amazing idea. It's been picked up and distributed this year. Um, but what for me was very exciting about that idea, it was all about resolving what seemed to be an intractable problem. Uh, thinking about the person, thinking about issues of racism, thinking about policing, thinking about safety, but thinking about really how can I make this situation better? So it isn't just about something that could bring increase in funds as the $30,000. It's about what about your ideas making this world better? So I want to thank you for taking the time to do that. Uh, some of you may not know Dr. Savoy served uh, for several years as our board chair and led this university through some, some very dynamic change. It was that type of entrepreneurial spirit while he was running his own organization. It was him being a servant leader uh, to do both things at once that we also admire. So it's not just about the gift, Dr. Dr. Savoy. Th it is really about your ability to lean in and be a servant leader. So that's the thing that I'll actually leave you with. 
very much luck for all of your pitching tonight. I wish I could stay. I have a dinner thing. Um, you guys may not know this, but I'm an Ole Miss uh, grad, and we play Tulane on Saturday. So all of Mississippi has descended on New Orleans, including lots of my friends and family. They're waiting for me for dinner. But I wanted to be here with you to wish you well and wish you luck. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cole. And uh, with you at the helm, I am extremely excited about our future. So thank you very, very much. Yes. And now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Capella, the Dean of the College of Business, to come up and share a few words. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. We are so excited. So this is obviously the second iteration of, of this. And you know, this really is uh, a testament to Barr and her entrepreneurial spirit. So between Barr and Sam, you know, we have, so let, let's stop and give them a round of applause, please. I'm not going to tell the president that she got a louder applause, but um, no, this is, this is really fantastic. So we've, we've nearly doubled the number of participants from last year. So that's very exciting. And this really is a signature event for us. And it, and it showcases the entrepreneurial talent that we have here at here at Loyola and it's really one of our three pillars for the college so it's obviously um, developing ethical business leaders is is you know kind of front and foremost as far as our mission and we do that through our Center for Ethics and Economic Justice then obviously we have our Center for Entrepreneurship and Community Development and then we have uh, international business as our, as our other pillar but but this really is is kind of the showcase for, for what we do here. And then we have something in the spring with, uh, with uh, the, the idea core. So between these two events, we really are able to, to kind of showcase the best and brightest that we have at the, uh, at the university when it, when it comes to this. And something else we're really proud of. So we had eight finalists last year. And last year we actually had $35,000 in prize money because we, we wanted to make sure everybody had something, so that was that's why we ended up with thirty-five thousand in prize money. But anyway, since that time, what's happened is those eight uh, participants have gone on to get additional funding and sales to the tune of over one million dollars. So that just <laughs> that's just a testament to how successful in in. Uh, and how good some of some of the uh, pitches were last year and i'm confident that this year will be uh, no different so i look forward to um to seeing what the presenters have for us today and i do want to thank everyone that's been involved you know throughout this whole process obviously it, it takes a village to to pull off something like that so thanks to everybody who who participated thus far and we are very proud of of the finalists that we're going to see tonight so thank you All right, so tonight is the culmination of a five-month journey for the entrepreneurs that are going to be presenting here tonight. It started in May, um, the, which is uh, we, we, the room right next door. We had a uh, two-week, seven-hour-a-day, uh, Monday through Friday boot camp, and I think all of the, the teams can say it was pretty intense. Um, but it's basically, they, they took their ideas, and we hammered them all out, and they brought, we brought in uh, specialists in all kinds of uh, fields, from legal to marketing to finance to presentations to team development. To HR, you name it, we had them in here, um, and these were all individuals from across New Orleans presenting. Um, we had a total of over 90 individuals participated in this program, um, between the mentors, the speakers, the entrepreneurs, and the judges. Uh, and uh, uniquely, this program is open to anyone in the Loyola family. 
that's students at any level. And we've had last year one of the one of our successful students. It's been generating some of the most money. Is was a rising sophomore. So he was a freshman when he gen joined the the uh, the program, and he's now paying for his his education through the work that he's doing um, uh, on, a, on a regular basis. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, but we. Um, but it's also open to alumni, to, to faculty, to staff, and even to parents. Um, and um, this year we had 20 venture teams, uh, bringing a total of 30 individuals. Among them, we had two faculty teams. One of the teams was from the College of Arts and Science. One was from the College of Business. We had a parent student team. We had a staff, a husband and wife team. We had nine alumni, and we had 19 combined undergraduate, graduates, uh, grad students, and their friends. So in May, we had, the, we had 19 pr professionals come in um, among the uh, alumni in New Orleans business community. Uh, they shared their expertise in legal formation, IP, marketing, financial projections, fund fundraising, team development, prototyping, and more. Then during the summer, we had 33 mentors that worked with, the men with our founders. And then last week, we had five judges who reviewed video pitches, and from that, eight were chosen to pitch tonight for a portion of the $30,000. And someday I'm going to figure out how to deal with this paper stuff. So, um, and here we are. What to expect tonight? Uh, the eight teams have eight minutes to present, and then there'll be two minutes of question and answers. Only the judges can ask questions. There's a timekeeper. Ileana has kindly, is kindly our timekeeper. She will be giving you a five-minute warning, a one-minute warning, and an end. So please do keep the time. We're trying to, we're, even though we're starting a little bit late here, we're going to try and keep to the, to the timing on this. I will cut your microphone. <laughs> the voice of God. Um, based on their presentations, the judges will determine who will be funded and how much they receive. Uniquely, we do not set a first, second, or third prize. The goal is for the teams to present what their next major milestone is and what they think they need to get there. And then the judges will arm wrestle and figure out how that gets distributed. So following the presentations, the judges will adjourn to deliberate while you get to celebrate. There'll be great food and libation in the other room here. Please go in and network and, and try to see, think through who you think is going to be the winners. Um, and then at 8.30, uh, probably a little bit later than that, we will come back here and we will have our awards ceremony. Okay, so without further ado, um, let me first introduce our, our wonderful judging team here. Uh, we have Bobby Savoy, our presenting sponsor, and we have three uh, other alumni, Amy Sims, Brenna Kane, and Kai Nguyen. And we also have our newly arrived uh, head of entrepreneurship education, Maxim Belitsky. And I hope I don't chew up anybody's names too badly tonight. So, drum roll, we are now ready to start. I'm gonna ask our first presenters to come down. It is Ken Fauchette and Joy Bruce. They're they were mentored by Michael Adler and Daryl Plaisance. And their company is Marcel's New Orleans. Hi, I'm Ken Fauche, and this is Joy Bruce. We're the founders of Marcel's, and we're here to talk to you about cocktails. Do you know what the best-selling cocktail in the world is? It's the old-fashioned. A great old-fashioned is complex. 
it has a richness of flavor. But complex flavors aren't easy to make. They're an obstacle course. They require multiple ingredients. They have a learning curve. They require fresh ingredients that can lead to waste. And it takes, ultimately takes a considerable amount of time to make. A great cocktail doesn't need to be difficult, time intensive, or costly. It just needs Marcel's. Marcel's is a new cocktail syrup brand based here in New Orleans. We make complex cocktails without the obstacle course. A bottle of Marcel's has everything you need in it except the alcohol. No orange slicing necessary. Marcel's was named after my great-grandfather, Marcel Fauché. Uh, he believed that a great drink didn't have to be fancy. It just had to be good. And his favorite drink was the old-fashioned. Raising a family during the Depression, he had many jobs in his life. In one, he worked with bars and restaurants on their licenses. During this time, he sampled old fashions from all over New Orleans, and it inspired him to make his own syrup mix. For generations, my family has celebrated and connected with old fashions, but after his passing, the homemade mix fell away. Like Marcel, we believe that great cocktails and mocktails should be readily available to everyone. Marcel's is crafted with high quality ingredients, steeped with delicious, rich, versatile flavors, and is made for memorable experiences. Of course, we're not the first one to try to make an old fashioned more accessible, right? All of these brands have something on the market that helps you make an old fashioned, ranging from low quality syrups with um, cheap or uh, not as great ingredients, or high quality syrups, but they still require multiple ingredients and a learning curve. They're made for mixologists and they haven't taken you off of the obstacle course. Marcel stands apart because we have taken complex flavors and put them into one simple to make application. You will also see that there is considerable white space in the market for a challenger brand to capture market share. And that market is very large. Cocktail syrups alone are a $4.1 billion global industry. Drink mixers of all types are even larger at $8.6 billion. The pandemic accelerated consumer demand for simple, accessible beverage options that people can enjoy at home or elsewhere. This has propelled the pre-mixed or ready-to-drink category to over 33 billion globally. In many ways, Zing Zang has perfected this for Bloody Marys. It's a complex cocktail with simple instructions. Pour over ice and stir. Starting with a family recipe, they're now a global leader and the fastest growing brand in the category. All of this with the 12th most popular drink in the world. We want to be the Zing Zang of old fashions. Our market research shows us that most cocktail drinkers are likely to try a new mixer. 92% of those who drink cocktails one or more a week have said that they are open to trying a new brand. These are volume drinkers who are familiar with the market. And while 90% of them have used a mix in the past, only 33% could name a preferred brand that wasn't Zing Zang, leaving plenty of space in the market to capture market share. Occasional drinkers are less likely to have used a mix in the past, but they have also said that they are likely to try one, 79%, making them a large, untapped opportunity. Marcel's is for customers like Matt. He's a regular cocktail drinker who finds it as the perfect way to unwind after a long day. Or Evan, who discovered Marcel's at his favorite bar, and now he keeps it at home to entertain friends. Stephanie's bar is a local staple. She has, has Marcel's in her bar to expand her menu and offer simple quality options that her customers love. We're going to reach those customers through three distinct channels. Marcel's is already available direct from us via our website. Off-premise, we're going to wholesale to spirits retailers and specialty shops. And on-premise, we're going to continue to target bars and restaurants that either don't have an in-house cocktail program or want to simplify and scale their offerings. These are strategic accounts that uh, drive brand awareness. Like Zing Zang, 
We want to capture market share by meeting our customers where they are in their busy lives. People are looking for simple, delicious beverage options. We are all busy, and when we have free time, we want to spend it with the people and activities that we love. Of course, we're not going to be the first Louisiana brand in the food and beverage industry to try to go big and nationwide, right? We know that brands all the way from Tabasco to Ruth's Chris have shown us that authentic companies with real products and people and stories, they inspire passion in folks far beyond Louisiana's borders. Today, we are thrilled to announce a partnership with the Southern Food and Beverage Museum, home of the Museum of the American Cocktail. This partnership is threefold. First of all, we will use their commercial kitchen facility to scale our production for wholesale sales. Secondly, Marcel's will be featured in their reimagined museum shop, introducing Marcel's to a steady stream of beverage enthusiasts and giving us a base for our direct sales. And finally, Marcel's will make sure that every old fashioned served in their historic bar is consistently great. As founders, we have executive leadership experience and experience in the beverage industry. Our advisors have experience across startups, food, content, and capital, providing us with resources and networks that will help us grow. Our growth milestones this year include launching our website, becoming a permanent fixture on our favorite bar's menu, and $5,000 in direct sales. Our goal right now is to create a wholesale-ready product. We're currently updating our IP, our brand assets, and our labeling to create a brand that can stand out on shelves and earn its fair share of minds and wallets. But that's where you come in. Today, we're asking for $25,000 to accelerate our growth and build market momentum. This will go to scaling our inventory, which will allow us to lower our cost of goods by 50%. And it will contribute to launching our retail program and a marketing campaign that will help establish our brand and support sales. With these margins, we'll be able to pursue partnerships like distribution, which will be able to accelerate our growth and scale revenue, annual revenue, beyond a million dollars in 2026. Today, you have the opportunity to change the trajectory of our growth curve. $25,000 takes us from a home-based operation to one with the capacity of over 300 units a day and gross margins of 80%. The goal of this organization is meaningful, to propel a local organization to immediate success. If you want to make the most impact with this award, please choose us. Thank you for your consideration. We go. Um, there are already, as you know, a lot of people in this market. Market. Um, in fact, there's a large company here in New Orleans that does very similar. I don't think they do old fashions. By the way, they tasted very good. Thank you. Um, so, are you? What are your sales like right now? Are you already selling, and it's just online? You're not in any stores, anything like that right now? We do not have bottles on the shelf in any stores. That has been intentional. We pulled back and we're preparing to, to launch that correctly. We are available in a local bar um, and we've been consistently okay. providing them with several bottles a month. Um, but our target market is different than that local company that also has syrups. Um, as I said in the, the slide with competitors, their syrups are intentionally broad and wide, and they're looking to cater to mixologists, not to people who are looking for something like Zing Zang, where it's a two ingredient. Even the establishments that they go after, like our local bar, they wanted to ensure that it was only two ingredients, because they're what I call a two ingredient bar, right? A neighborhood bar, you walk in, and if you say you want to drink, the name of what those ingredients are better be in the name, right? And so, it's a very different market that we are going after. And that particular company is very brutal, and they go after people to try to put them out of business because they we don't want competition. We are not trying to put them out we, of business. We are, we are not. To me, they coexist. I think there is always room for strong brands with strong stories and strong positioning. Okay? Well said. Um, uh, 
Zing Zang. Thank you very much. I very much enjoyed the presentation, so I enjoyed the drinks. Um, it says old fashioned mix. So uh, you mentioned it's this top one uh, famous drink, so lots of old fashioned lovers, I'm sure we all try it old fashioned. But you may want this pretty narrow niche. So in, would this um, bottle could, could be used for other drinks, for other cocktails, and so complementary to? to maybe to other drinks so to expand the market yeah so absolutely yeah. so two answers to that number one our approach to this product is to show how versatile it is so we don't just look at it as something you pair with bourbon we actually have a, a, a recipe catalog that we've done of over 40 cocktail and mocktail applications with this mix across different spirits and not even with other spirits so that's part of our content and positioning in the market at the same time we realize to have a wedge into the market, you need to stake a claim. Zing Zang did that with Bloody Mary Mix. It's still their flagship. Right now, we see this as our flagship. It has the resonant story. We're open to expanding and extending the product line um, where it makes sense, but we really want to get product market fit before we try to go too wide. We'll take one more question. Are, all gonna Are these the only size that you guys sell? And how much are they selling for? How profitable are you guys? That is the current retail size. Um, that sells for $15. Um, and we have a larger size that we sell to the bars. Um, as we look to develop a retail product, we wholesale them to retail shops. We will probably also have a smaller size bottle that's specifically been asked for tourists so that they could take them on airplanes afterwards and it would meet uh, flight criteria. Um, our current cost. I was about to say, and for reference, this costs us right now making it at home about four seventy per bottle to make. We sell it for fifteen. Uh, with the funding that we're looking for and the scale we're looking to achieve, we can cut that into half to about two forty, which really allows us to go into market and wholesale. Very good. Thank you very very much. Thank you. Let me give the judges just a quick minute now to put their, their scoring in. And while they're scoring, I'm going to invite, uh, I'm going to introduce our next team. Um, the next presenters is uh, Gregory Busson and Hannah Goyar. Uh, their, their mentors were Jane Cooper, Kyle Murphy, and John Roberts. And the company is Neurospace. Hello everyone, my name is Hannah and I'll be representing both myself and my esteemed colleague Greg. I'll be presenting our business Neurospace, an aspiring supplement company that uses to improve cognition. The focus of today's pitch is our first go-to market product, Ibis, which will be addressing symptoms of, uh, I apologize. <laughs> The focus of today's pitch is our first go-to market product, Iris, which will be addressing symptoms associated with menopause, especially mental clarity. Our credentials alone should speak about why we decided to go through this route and why we're the perfect team. We both studied the realm of neuroscience intensely given our bachelor degrees from Loyola and Boston College. However, with some of you may not guess is that one of the most important and well-studied subjects in our degrees was how women's brains are affected in integral parts of their lives due to the intense fluctuations of hormones that they experience. These integral stages being puberty, childbirth, and menopause. That's why we started to pursue a formula for iris. Also, our personal experience has led us to where we are today. Greg in particular is raised in a Korean household where diet and health were hand in hand. So the idea of offering a similar experience just kind of made sense. To start off, I want to ask the crowd, how many of you actually know about the symptoms and treatments for menopause? That seems about right, because a PubMed survey with over 3,000 women aged 40 and up shows 90% of these women have never received any formal learning about this important transition in their lives, and over 60% prefer to still be uninformed. 
And I assure you that over 100% of husbands out there know even less. <laughs> That same survey that I mentioned previously also shows that more than half of women suffer from all three symptoms. And yet surprisingly, there's still no great solution out there. Currently, women have three main options for adjusting menopausal symptoms. Endurance. Many women aren't really well informed about menopausal symptoms, so they endure the discomfort until it naturally fades. The second being hormonal therapy. While some consider this, it involves multiple doctor's visits, can be costly without good insurance, and has risks like high cancer risk. Many women we interviewed actually had negative reactions to this. And the third being dietary supplements. Most women we stuck to, spoke to, uh, I apologize. <laughs> Most women we spoke to prefer supplements since they don't significantly alter biomarkers. However, there are concerns about the quality and effectiveness of available options, which we aim to address with IRIS. So, what's our solution, or our secret formula, that we've worked months on? We don't want to hide anything from our investors, let alone our potential consumers. So, here it is for everyone to see. We narrowed it down to these seven because we found the research backing these to be the strongest. Now we understand that you may look at this and be like, I have no idea what any of these ingredients are. <laughs> so let me help you out. We've grouped the ingredients and their benefits respectively based on the studies and clinical trials that we reviewed. Moving on, we want to dispel the image of Greg and I sitting in a kitchen and filling a bunch of capsules up with various powders. Instead, we've contacted a vast amount of manufacturers and did our due diligence to find the one for us so that our consumers will get the best and safest option out there. We decided to partner with NutriCap for this endeavor since they're located in the US, specifically Georgia, and have the certifications to show that they can be trusted. As you can see, our product Iris, the first one listed, not only addressed the three primary symptoms, but it's also the only one with such strong scientific supporting items. So the first thing you might ask is, how did we hit all three symptoms while our competitors haven't? Well, we've done this through our unique experimental proprietary blend that we've specifically chosen from a list of over 30 plus potential ingredients. And thereafter, we had the formula checked by medical and industry experts. However, our priority is transparency and safety for our customers. So we plan on sending a badge to a number of people who we already interviewed that show inter that show <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> However, our priority is transparency and safety for our customers. So we plan on sending a badge to a number of people whom we've already interviewed that's shown interest that want to participate in a beta study where they'll track their own experience with IRIS. Then our data scientists will compile our collected data for our consumers to see. We're more than confident in our formula and would rather go through these extra hoops if it meant securing the peace of mind of our consumers. Also, our market is by no means small, nor is it shrinking anytime soon, as you can see here. As a matter of fact, market research revealed that 77% of women in the US claim to use dietary supplements with the same percentage deriving from household incomes of over $100,000. And our primary market research strongly supported these statistics as well. I conducted around 100 interviews with the majority of women being between the ages of 45 to 55 and came from households with annual incomes exceeding $100,000. And the data revealed that all of these women would pay up to $250 monthly for a supplement to help relieve the primary symptoms of menopause. So based on everything I've just said, you could probably already guess that the menopausal dietary supplement I apologize again. <laughs> okay. 
So based on everything I've just said, you could probably already guess that the menopausal dietary supplement market in the US is probably not a small number, with a valuation of $4.9 billion in 2021, with a consistent growth pattern for the future. We plan on reaching this target market by testing a variety of ads through Meta. We came to this conclusion through a secondary market research with data analysis of 500,000 500, social media posts, showing that over 60% of our market, target market continued use of dietary supplements for cognitive benefit. This use of interest is also reflected in survey data analysis from none other than the AARP. We plan on reaching that target market through a B2C e-commerce model to, to avoid costs associated with a brick and mortar establishment. Moreover, we plan on implementing a subscription system so that we can maximize uh, customer retention and even save our customers a little bit of money. In terms of revenue, we plan on using the investment more than wisely. We have a cost of goods sold of $12 per unit with our plan of ordering an initial $500, 500 bottles with 90 capsules each and selling them at $59.99. That leaves us with a staggering 400% markup. And here is our trusted advisory board who's helped us immensely along the way. But please keep in mind that this is just a fraction of our team since we've also got a number of supporters that will help with our competition as they are experts in regulations, legality, health, and more. So finally, we're now on to our ask, which is $15,000. This cost would be split amongst the groupings shown to ensure the success of the company so that our investors can be at ease, knowing that our money, that their money, would be allocated appropriately and efficiently. If we're able to get this investment today, then we'll happily begin the formation of our company today and the distribution of IRIS today. We'd like to say thank you so very much for lending us your ear, and we hope you consider joining us in helping all women going through this transition and for the trans future success of Neurospace. Really great presentation. That was Thank awesome. Um, and what a big market to be going after. So yeah. congratulations on all the success so far. Um, you, I might have just missed this, um, so apologies if so. Mm -hmm. Can you just uh, talk me through where you are in terms of, I know you said you had a beta trial coming up, but in terms of manufacturing, do, does this exist yet? It, sound, it sounds like you've got the ingredients listed, but do you know kind of from, just walk me through from here to market kind of what the next steps are. Hannah, do you yeah. mind if I take it? Yeah, that's all right. Hopefully. All right, so yeah, we already have our manufacturer down and our proprietary formula done when we already have a quote from our manufacturer. So given if we are able to get this investment, we can start manufacturing this within the next few weeks. And then you said you were gonna test how, on, what was the beta test number again? Yeah, so we plan on giving away at least about a three month dosage of the supplement itself to a number of women that we already interviewed who would be interested in participating in it. And our data scientists would then compile everything up and we would then send it out for our consumers to see. Okay, do you have a number? Sorry, I think I missed it. The number of beta testers? Yeah, so as of now, we have 30 out of the 100 that we interviewed. Great, thank you. Does this product require FDA approval? No. no? What, how do you see uh, your organization you know, six months, one year from now with that $15,000 investment? Uh, you know, what is your projection uh, in the next six months with that? And Are you talking about in terms of sale, R&D, mm -hmm. or? As far as, uh, we know that this is, 15,000 is a small ask for something, uh, a market this large and this competitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to see where your projections are and what your thought process is for the growth of the organization in the next six months, one year, two years. Absolutely. So with the 15,000, a good chunk of it, as you saw from the previous slide, would go towards manufacturing, approximately $6,000 worth. And then uh, thereafter, we, it would be 500 for the minimum order quantity. And we hope to sell around 5,000 for the first year, if not 10. 
Well, as someone with a 63-year-old wife, I very much appreciate your product. Absolutely. Uh, but the question is, there are tons of products out on, uh, available in, in uh, pharmacies, on the, online. You constantly see commercials for products that simply don't work. Absolutely. How do you uh, separate yourself from the also-rans? So our biggest thing, as Hannah mentioned, is we want to be transparent and gain the trust of our consumers. And that's why we formed the advisory board as we did. We actually had our formula reviewed by two doctors and one RN, and we're still in the midst of getting it reviewed by a dietitian. And we hope to add even more experts in the medical field to our team so that our consumers can trust us and know that what they're taking is efficacious. I think that's it for our questions right now. Thank you very much. Well done. Well done. All right, and our third presenters are Frankie Weinberg and Bradford Shoup. Their mentors, Mike Eckert and Joseph Hyde, and the company, Leading Consultation International. I think Barbara's got it. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Frankie Weinberg. I'm the CEO of Leading Consultation International, and I'm a professor here, right in the College of Business at Loyola. And I'm Brad Shoup, I'm Frankie's business partner, partner and chief operating officer. And we are going to present to you today a solution to the number one problem facing global organizations today, and that is the corrosion of their leadership pipelines. Corn Ferry recently completed a study identifying that by the year 2030, American companies will be unable to address $8.5 trillion worth of business due to a lack of experienced senior executive leadership. Companies are currently out there now trying to figure out how to fill that gap. They're going to the market, they're looking for experienced leaders, and they're finding that the process is very slow, very expensive, and very unsatisfying. The alternative approach is to look within the companies. Every company has a great population of high potential employees. And what they can do there is identify their high potential employees, bolster their leadership development, give them the competencies and the skills they need to be successful, and align them with those future leadership opportunities. And that's where we come in. So I developed the multidimensional intelligence leadership program to address these exact needs. It's designed for today's highly mobile up and coming leaders. Let me explain how it works. Let's say that Latrum purchases a subscription to our service for its employees. Latrum is going to begin by inputting information about what it needs for leaders. What does a Latrum leader look like, for example? Sam, a Latrum employee, is going to start his developmental process by taking an assessment during which he's able to start to consider and understand a bit more about what his current state as a leader is. He's also, during this time, going to be able to begin uh, providing some information about challenges he's currently facing and the type of opportunities that he's interested in pursuing. He's going to be able to immediately work through some needs that are directly uh, uh, related to aligning his needs and those of Latrum's because of our AI and algorithms that are able to work to choose exactly the right modules for what they need. Moreover, working with our AI coach, he's able to immediately apply all of his learning directly on the job. Meanwhile, Latrum's executives are able to track Sam's progress and as leadership opportunities, begin to unfold in the organization, they can determine which ones he's best suited for. So the leadership development market is large and growing. Right now, the total addressable market is in excess of $60 billion. Our market research has found a sweet spot. 
Those medium to large companies where their high potential employees are getting ready to move into their first executive leadership positions. Right now, that market segment is spending $1.6 billion a year in that development space. Our revenue model is based on a recurring subscription revenue for the use of the application. As more people at companies uh, come onto the platform, this will scale easily. Our medium to large companies are the customer base that we're addressing. As we add more companies, we'll also be able to provide private coaching to their employees and private consulting services to help them roll out the MDI program. This is scalable because we have certified professional coaches at our disposal that we'll bring on to supplement the staff as 1099 employees. The leadership development area can be lucrative, but we also understand, of course, that it's crowded. It's a crowded space. That's why it's imperative that we bring forward a superior product. Our particular competitive advantage here lies in our capacity to be able to draw, use this, uh, this leading edge technology that we're bringing forward together with my understanding of leadership development curricula and work through the AI process of ensuring that there is a, uh, pardon me, that there is a tailorable, personalized solution that's immediately available for use on the job. Nobody else is bringing this forward. Nobody else has this. And as you can see here, our MDI app is not designed to be a one-size-fits-all solution. And that's a really, really good thing. So we've had a very busy summer. We got off to an excellent start. We've got our uh, MDI construct uh, in place. We had the architecture reviewed uh, by an expert and validated. Uh, we've talked to industry experts, interviewed companies that may be potential customers in the future. And we actually have some that are excited about doing a pilot project with us at this point. Next year, we're going to launch into developing and perfecting our minimum viable product. This will be launched with our pilot project partners. We will learn from their experience, gather the data and the lessons learned from their application of our system, and incorporate that back into the design so that we can give a full design package to the coders uh, in the third quarter of 2024. So Brad and I have been collaborating now for over three years. Brad's primarily a te technical guy. He brings also forward a lot of experience as a manager of technical teams. I'm primarily an academic. My specializations lie in curriculum development, assess excuse me, assessment development, and leadership development. Together, we are both certified professional coaches, so we know this space really well. We've been very fortunate so far to have already started out our tech team. So we have Nikki, who's an AI expert, and we have Ryan, who's the chief architect of, of his company, and they have both already had several conversations with us. They are familiar with our minimally viable product, and they are excited to be part of our team. They're looking forward to moving forward with us, obviously, we are also indebted to our mentors for what they're bringing forward and all the work that they've done with us this summer. As Brad alluded, we already have five major companies all excited about moving forward with us on our pilot project. So we've got uh, three and a half thousand dollars bootstrapped into the uh, kitty so far to do uh, some consulting and planning. Our ask for tonight is $10,000 and that is to build out the minimum viable product. Get it in front of our pilot project partners, go run it to ground, see how it works, find out how we can improve it, get those lessons learned and bring them back to the team. We are We're super excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your attention and thank you for allowing us to be part of this. Um, don't take this question as being negative. 
but I've built three companies and had thousands of employees, and I have been approached by dozens, maybe 50 leadership training programs. I just looked online and found 10 leadership apps just uh, in my first search. What's going to make your app different, and how are you going to establish a beachhead and a market so that you can actually set yourself apart from the everybody else that's out there? Sure. I'll start with the first part of your question. I see kind of two questions here. The first part, what sets us apart? What we didn't really have time to get into, what do we mean by multidimensional intelligence? It's the curriculum that we've been working on. I've designed this. It's based on four major areas in leadership. Intrapersonal leadership, what's going on within yourself, self-leadership. Interpersonal leadership. Cultural leadership, meaning leading organizational culture. It can also more expand into the global societal concepts. And operational intelligence. That right there is what everyone's telling us is missing. The link between leadership development and operations. Nobody has been doing that well. All of those leadership development areas, they're focusing on the soft skills. Most leadership folks, they're org behavior folks like me. Very, very few of us move into that meso and macro space. That's why we've got Brad coming on here. That's why I focus on this as my primary research to practice strategy. The beachhead. The beachhead. Is there would, you, time? would you like to tackle that? Oh, I thought. Oh, there. oh. there's a second part. There was a second part about the go to the, the yeah. beachhead. Did, right. did you feel that I come? Yeah. What is your beachhead? How are you going to establish it? And then how are you going to grow? Sure. So, so the, the beachhead strategy is very straightforward. We're going to get through our MVP. We're going to improve the product. We're going to go to our uh, version one release. We're going to then go out there and build a cadre of medium to large companies uh, and bring them into the community. They are going to be our beachhead. Uh, I'm anticipating that we'll be uh, slightly cash flow positive next year. Uh, I think in two years we'll be uh, very cash flow positive and probably doing a million dollars in revenue. And then in uh, 2026, I'm anticipating that'll be in the eight to $10 million worth of revenue. What is the sell to the leadership, uh, the training manager, the HR manager who's in charge of leadership and is concerned that this is one more program that is the employee feels is checking a box, is going through the motions to complete, but may not be as personally invested in because it's an, a technology-based approach? Sure. Let, let me handle the first part. Are we good? I heard the buzzer. We're good to answer this? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. OK. Yeah, so number one, one thing that we've realized, the people who are going to be the primary interest for the companies, these up-and-coming leaders or the first-time managers, they're really busy. So we needed to make sure that our deliverables as part of this app are immediately and directly applicable to what they're working on. It's not just you take an assessment at the end and you score, right? We've got enough AI. We've got enough technology now that we can pull from that using proper qualitative data analysis. And we can then determine, we can make decisions. The other aspect is this, the largest companies, you've got large companies, Walmart, for example, right? They have all these different potential folks. Walmart's example, many of their people throughout the, the organization don't even have a college degree who could potentially be moving up. There's a lot of opportunities for, that, that could be there. But the company doesn't necessarily know how far each of these different trainings have gone. From companies as wide as Haynes Brand International all the way through um, Chevron, we're hearing from all the executives that HR is putting these programs into place. They're all talking, the execs are walking around the water cooler saying, did you know, did they ask your input about this? Why are they doing this? So what we need to, to be able to put forward is the opportunity for them to all collectively have a better idea and have access to see what's happening at their organizations, what's happening throughout their organizations, who can match for what. So this is, does that help to answer some of what your concern was? Can, can I add one element to that? So I spent 40 years in corporate America. I went through dozens of leadership development programs, and they were pretty good for what they had to offer. The piece that was missing, and this is the piece that we're bringing, is connecting, aligning the company goal, the individual goal, 
and the development plan that makes it play together. And that's why we're not one size fits all. We bring in the tailoring, the AI, and we do the work to optimize that solution for both the company and the individual. Thank you all. Appreciate the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, as our judges put some of their scores down, I'm gonna introduce our next presenter, Mary Stays. And Mary's mentors were Lee McMillan and Desiree um, Al um, alums. And her company is We Do Cute. Please welcome Mary. Good evening, everybody. As Ms. Barr said, my name is Mary Stays. I am the owner of We Do Cute, and this is my pitch presentation for Launch You. So a little bit about me. I started making tumblers in 2017. I became an LLC in 2019. Um, and since then, some of my established clients are the crew of Zulu, Hearst and WDSU Leadership, and the Young Men Illinois Club, which is the largest black, I mean, the oldest black carnival crew in New Orleans. The value proposition that I have, why We Do Cute is different from anybody else out there, is that we create special memories and keepsakes by offering personalized tumblers and gifts. How does this work? First, we start with a blank tumbler. I send a mock-up to my clients. It is customized. I do it digitally. Once they approve it, I print it out on a sublimation printer, and then I heat press it, and we come out with this gorgeous customized tumbler here. My business model, so how do I make money? There are two different types of customers that I cater to. The individual retail customer, so maybe they see my tumblers on social media or they find me on Google, they just want a quick gift and they order through my website directly through me. And my wholesale customers, so these are larger groups, um, sports teams, schools, um, excuse me, carnival clubs, and just bigger orders. My cost of goods and profit margin. These are my two best sellers. My 20 ounce stainless steel tumbler costs $5.57 to make, and I sell it at $25. And then my 30 ounce stainless steel tumbler costs $8.07 to make, and I sell it at $35. So for my research, I sent out a survey on all of my different social media networks and to my previous customers. And I just wanted to get a feel for what are the different types of tumblers or drinkware that they liked, how long they were willing to wait for an order, and what price point they were looking for. So 63% of people who answered my survey said that they buy personalized gifts every few months. 58% said that they would pay more than $30 for a stainless steel tumbler. And this was really interesting to me, because as you saw on the previous slide, that's more than what I sell my tumblers for. And then 80% said that they were buying stainless steel tumblers, but they were given the opportunity to fill in the blank on what, they, what other products that they wanted to look for. Some of them said wine glasses, mason jar glasses, and whiskey tumblers. But this just solidified to me that I'm, I have a good niche and people are looking for the type of product that I provide. So my market opportunity. The personalized gift giving market was estimated at 2.4 billion in 2022. We all know Mardi Gras brings in a lot of money, right? So crews spend 23 million annually on Mardi Gras. There are at least six parading majority black crews, and I already have a partnership with the crew of Zulu. That means right now I already have 16% of the market on lock. Next year we're pushing to double that. This is my revenue opportunity. These numbers are based on my projected sales with the crew of Zulu, and each year after that, just doubling up. Once we get through our next wholesale order with the crew of Zulu, we'll reach so many other people and so many other crews that doubling that will be easy. So I wanted to give you guys a real life scenario so that you could see my tumblers and how these tumblers and the numbers work together. The crew of Zulu is asking for two different size tumblers. The branded 30 ounce tumbler, I'm selling to them wholesale for $21. Everyone in the crew is not going to buy a tumbler, right? So we did buy half of the crew, which is 300 members, and the profit would be $3,879. 
For the character branded Tumblr, so these, the different characters that you see in Zulu are like witch doctor, the king, the queen, the maids, all the different types of floats. They want a 20 ounce Tumblr. I'm selling the, that to them wholesale for $14.50. The profit per float will be $312.55. And so the total profit for all of these branded Tumblrs will be $2,187. So the competition, you can go on Etsy, it's no surprise, you walk in the French Quarter, you see somebody selling tumblers, you might know somebody that's doing these epoxy tumblers that are on the left, right? The epoxy tumblers are such an involved process. It takes at least a week to make this, so you can't scale it, you can't do it wholesale. These other types of tumblers, they're not We Do Cute. Have you had a We Do Cute come tumbler? <laughs> I'm local. I have multiple clients who come back to me month and month again and do repeat orders. My work stands for itself. So for the team strength, prior to launch you, it was just me. I, I'm the person who designs the tumblers. I print them out. I press them. I ship them. The global headquarters is in my guest bedroom. It's just me. But because of launch you, I was able to gain two very good mentors, Mr. Lee McMillan, he's a portfolio manager. He really helped me to see it past the side hustle, to really see how my business could grow and what my numbers would really look like. And then Ms. Desiree Mercado, she's a boutique owner. She helped me a lot with the research, finding out what my wholesale price would be, and just making sure that that lines up with what my customers are looking for. So how much are you asking for, Mary? <laughs> $7,000. The majority of this money is going to go towards a sublimation printer. Right now, what I have is a converted inkjet printer. And because it's converted, it's out of warranty. So if something happens to it, ink leaks everywhere, a paper jam happens, I'm the one that's on YouTube and TikTok trying to figure it out. Most of that money would go towards a printer so that I have the right thing to print out my sublimation um, products. And just I have that peace of mind. I need a printer stand. Everything can't go in the guest bedroom, so. <laughs> and then I'm looking to increase my inventory. So I am a social media professor here at Loyola. This is the time where you take out your phones and you point them at the screen and you follow me on all of the social media networks. And then you go to my website and you buy things just in case I don't get anything here. You can help me out. <laughs> Thank you. I had to wake y'all up. <laughs> you should take my class. <laughs> are there any questions? So are you only looking to stay local in New Orleans? I am not only looking to stay local. There's DC Mardi Gras. There's all types of opportunities out there. Um, I'm just looking for an opportunity. I'm looking for a door to walk in. How do you compete against like a four uh, imprint and the big companies? Because if they're selling these, we we buy like thousands of these. Right, companies. right. Everybody has a Yeti yeah. that has something in their yes. cabinet, right? Like I said, do you have a We Do Cute tumbler? Is it custom made? Is it exactly what you wanted? No, you got some you know, trade things slapped, some logo slapped on there, right? It's not flowers, it's not pretty, it's not custom made just for you. It's not custom made just for your company. It's got a little rubber thing at the bottom so you don't like spill everywhere. It comes with a straw, you know? I keep the details in mind. Um, quick question, when you were talking through your cost and what you sell for, is that like the actual cost of just the goods or does that take in your time because I assume as you are uh, telling us which is amazing that they're very custom made um, did you like factor that in or is it just just cost of goods it's not just cost of goods it is time cool. because I um, design everything digitally and I have a pretty good background doing that then it's not a whole lot of time it's just you know sitting down with the customer figuring out what they want laying that out and then giving them the mock-up I definitely see the local market and love your product. Thank you. The original, uh, Thank you so much. Previously, on a broader scale, how does your price on a uh, 
for a large order, I think you called it the wholesale price. How does that compare to some of the companies that do this? It may not be as pretty as yours, but they do this on a broad scale. So the companies that do this on a broad scale, they are cheaper than me, right? But as I said, I am here, I am local, I understand the fabric of New Orleans, I understand the work that goes into my business, and I'm here, I'm involved, and I'm giving you that time and that touch. Not everyone buy based on price. I'll tell you that. It doesn't have to be the cheapest. It just has to be the best. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. We are going not going to take a break because of the, uh, the delay in our program today. We're so we're going to jump rolling. right into our next group, which is... Whoop. Um, Aubin, Docher, am I saying that right? Close enough. Farrah Wells, Gabriel uh, Porges are the team members. The mentors were Denny Bro, Dan Perry, and the company is Hand Offer. Please welcome. Hi everyone, and welcome to the future of student living. Imagine a world where you can have affordable, sustainable, and accessible furniture solutions at the fingertips of every college student. We're proud to introduce HandOffer, the second-hand student marketplace where buyers and sellers within the university ecosystem can trade furniture without breaking the bank. Every college student faces the inevitable way and challenge to move into an apartment and the quest for buying and selling quality and affordable furniture solution. Yet, when I moved to the US in 2019, I was shocked by the tons of furniture lying off the street and still in good condition. It was not until 2021, when I had to move off campus, that I realized the struggle to find affordable quality solution as mentioned before. And I actually ended up getting my microwave, my air fryer, my rug, and many other small appliances and piece of furniture from the trash itself. And I still use it today, and it's still in good condition. That's where Handoffer was born. So as mentioned in my story, for students to buy and sell reusable furniture, it's inconvenient and safe and unsustainable. Students don't have time to spend hours sifting and sorting to create websites such as Facebook Marketplace. They don't even know if they can pay on the platform. They don't even know who's on the other side of the platform. Are you getting compensated as promised? Are you getting the item as pictured? Not to mention those 10 million tons of furniture going to landfills every single year just in the US. This is not mentioning small appliances, rugs, all of those stuff. And you can see some of them during the hasty moving word period on Calhoun and Fred every single year. So that's where Handoffer comes in. Let's take Jen. Jen is a freshman who needs a study desk. She doesn't own a car. She's an international student. She doesn't have many connections here in town. So she's the perfect buyer. She's going to take her phone download the app Handoffer. Then she's going to create an account directly with the .edu verification. She's going to put her .edu email address to make sure she's a student here in the US. Once she does that, she's going to have access to the platform. She's going to discover a student-centric and well-designed platform. Once she gets there, she's going to click on the Buy page, find all what she needs with the filters and sorting very easy and she's going to find the study desk she wants. She's going to click on it and see Craig on the other side of the platform. But before she buys it, she's going to see that Craig has only good ratings and reviews. He's also from the same university. He's also in the same field of study as her. She's going to feel safe, click on it, go to purchase it. Once she gets there, the payment is made. It's secure and on the app. But also she realized that she can get reimbursed if the transaction doesn't go to the end of if she doesn't get the right item. So she feel even more confident. On the other side, you have Craig, who's the perfect seller. He's the perfect seller. He owns a car. He's a native New Orleans. He has everything he needs. And he's also selling a study desk because he's a graduate student. He wants to get rid of stuff. He's going to he sold faster than all the other students because he followed the tips and recommendations on how to sell. He followed the clear and girl, clear pictures on the platform. Once he did that, he got Jen who bought the product. He received a notification. And now they can chat on the platform. 
to see how they deliver the product and how they do the transaction. So convenient, safe, and sustainable. The industry, the furniture industry is very interesting. It's completely shifting in the past few years from giants that were mass producing, so that's the fast furniture market, to now more recent markets. We're more sustainable and we want to reuse our item and make more money with it. As you can see, the resale furniture market is driving the furniture market. So it's way bigger and it's the one driving it. And if we focus with handoffer only on college students here in Louisiana, we can get in the next three years 15 million in revenue. Our go-to market is to better test the app at Tulane and Loyola where everything started. Once we do that, then we're going to expand and launch the platform in March 2024 and to expand in the greater New Orleans area where you have two HBCUs, you have two community colleges, you have one Jesuit, one public, one private institution. So you have everything you need to test the platform, test the app, and if it works, it's going to be easy to replicate all over the country. The next growth market is LSU, which has about the same amount of students than all those universities above together. How do we make money? It's very simple. We get a transaction fee on every transaction, so a fixed and variable fee. We also uh, allow students and sellers to boost their item to sell faster. Uh, so they, it's going to go at the top of the page. And we're going to have native and banner ads on the app to sustain the app and get additional revenue. In terms of profit, since we launched in March 2024, we're going to have to spend and invest heavily into marketing to educate students not to throw away furniture, which is our main competitor as of today. And we're going to have to create the app and pay the app developers that we're working with. After only 40,000 transactions and in the spring 2025, we're going to break even. We differentiate ourselves because we focus on the student community and student-centric app, and it creates a sense of safety and confidence for students with the .edu verification, with the payment process on the app. Everything is under on the app. The chatting, the payment, the listing, everything is on the app, so easy to track back. And of course, our main driver, as the founder, my, my main driver, it's sustainability. That's why it's out there. The team, it's made of me, the founder, Aubin Duchier. I'm an international student, so I understand perfectly what it is, the struggle. And it's my second business. Then we have Farah, who's right there. She's more into digital and marketing communication. And we have Gay Porges, who's from Florida. He's more into the legal and financial side of things. Our timeline is to, during the fall, we're going to get into phase two, finish the layout, the design of the app, and cut the app to be able to test the app early on, on in 2024, get tested in Tulane and Loyola, as said earlier, because it's where everything started, and start the marketing campaigns, putting the marketing campaigns out there to be able to launch in March 2024, right before the move in, move out period in May, April and May, and then July, August. Tonight we're asking for 25,000, mostly to finish up the design. We want to hire a graphic designer, to keep it by student for students. That's our, that's our main driver. Then we're going to have also to finish the layout and the design with our, with our team of app developers from France. And we want to start integrating the, some features such as the dotted year verification, the in-app chat, and the secure payments. So that was a pleasure to talk to you. If you have one second, you can take the survey right there to help us build the features you need. And just keep in mind, it's right there. Help hand offer, keep your furniture off the streets. Thank you for your time. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Earlier, you showed that uh, there was a 15% fee, and then there was the $1, and then also the $2 boosting. Is there an additional fee that is charged to the customer for your credit card processing, or are, there, are credit card processing fees included in that 15%? Uh, everything is included in this 15%. So the $1 listing is to avoid that people use the system to sell outside of the platform, because that's why the main concern, they could just find each other and then go around. The 15% it's once the transaction in ma is made, so they can, 
usually when we interviewed students, their struggle is like they have, usually they sell to friends, so they have to lower their price. So here on the platform, they can put the price of, I mean, they want. And also with this 15 person, we promise them to find a buyer. So, so this service is kind of a service fee that we need. We put on the boosted listing, you don't have to use it, just if you want to be at the top of the page and sell faster. Um, especially, I, didn't, I forgot to mention, but for the seller, they can also put a deadline and an autopilot system, which allow you to sell before the date you want. So if you're moving out uh, May 30th, you can put May 30th, put your minimum price 50 bucks, the price you want to sell it 70 bucks, and then if it sells at 55, you take the 55. You don't have to wait for the 70 bucks. So that's what we're doing. I like your uh, .edu verification uh, for safety. That's excellent. Thank you. And uh, since I live over on Audubon Boulevard, I see all the sofas around the curbs <laughs> all the time whenever school gets out. Um, so I, I think you actually have something here. Um, how you, you showed yourself going $100,000 into the hole in 23 and then coming out in 24. Yeah. So how is $25,000 going to get you through that dip and the dip in 24 to get you up to 25? So this, this is the actual expenses we need. So it's going to be about 40 to 45,000 with the app developer team. Then we're going to have 25,000 into marketing, and we have also some expenses, which is some payroll, some uh, legal fees that we're going to have into the operating and personal expenses. It just tonight, the maximum is 30,000. So we try to bring the first step in front. You see the marketing is going to come after once we need to create the platform. And that's why if you can take the survey, it's going to help us not to spend money into useless or not necessary uh, features and focus only on the must, the must feature. I just don't want you to get the 25K and then get stuck in the hole where you can't get out of that to get to the product. No, so we in, we in touch and so I have personal fund and we have also some touch with the, uh, what's the name, startup fund, New Orleans startup fund. We're in touch with them. We're in touch also with some of the NOLA, NOLA angel investors. We're in touch with like some investors. We worked also this, this summer with MBA venture class. We had the chance to meet so many investors, meet so many MBA students, and they help us bring the product to the next stage. So we have a range of mentors and investors that could jump in when the need is here. So, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, good job. And I saw several phones go up and, and photographs, so good job, all right. So our next presenter is Tom Daly, and I don't believe uh, his, uh, his other partners are here, Max Daly and Sophie Daly. Yes, they are related. And um, uh, Tom's uh, mentors were Stacy Berger and Patrick O'Quan, and the company is Dependent Cares. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Tom Daly, and I'm here to introduce you guys to Dependent Cares. And Dependent Cares is reimagining dependent care account administration. And I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, it's about time, right? Because everybody's been wanting that. But so I first got to explain why I'm even talking about this. I'm, I graduated uh, Loyola in 1992. In 2001, after about a decade in the insurance business, I started an employee benefits consulting agency. Uh, in 2002, I started having a family. So for the last 21 years, I have been a working parent with young children. For the last 22 years, I've been working as an employer, employee benefits broker trying to help employers build benefit plans to attract and retain people. And one of the things on that list, that long list of products that I help employers uh, to buy and their employees participate is something called a DCFSA. And if you don't know what that is, you're not alone. DCFSA stands for Dependent Care Flexible Spending Account. And the best way to think about this, it's an employer-sponsored plan. Employers offer it. They allow their employees to participate. And it's essentially like a tax-free piggy bank for dependent care expenses. So that's before care, that's after care, that's summer care, and that's pre-K tuition. 
So before taxes means that if you set aside a deferral, most you can defer into a DCFSA as $5,000 a year, but that means you as an individual would save about $1,700 in federal, state, and FICA taxes. And that means that your employer would stand to save about $400 a year in matching payroll taxes for you. So this is all about trying to maximize tax savings. So that sounds like a great program, so what's, what's the problem? Well, the problem is I've been doing this for a long time, and I've come to realize that about a third of the employee population that exists in the U.S. has dependent care expenses. So like one in three people have young kids and expenses related to them, but only about 5% of those people participate in dependent care FSAs. Now, some of them don't have access. A lot of small employers don't even offer access to these plans, but a lot of them just don't, aren't aware. There's a tremendous problem with lack of awareness. There's a tremendous problem with misalignment of incentives because you can't do a DCFSA without an employer and a working parent and a care provider. So there's misaligned incentives there and there's unnecessary administrative uh, complexity in just managing these plans. So we, our solution is all about attacking all of those issues and bringing the parties to the transaction together. So I mentioned you have a parent, employer, and a, a care provider. Our platform is a shared platform for all of those folks. It makes the employer have the easiest possible pathway to introducing this concept and having all the education and enrollment and management and communication handled by the platform. We've also uh, tied our annual open enrollment to this plan to the start of a school year. It's a novel thought process, right? But none of them do that right now. So that's when you're thinking about dependent care expenses as a parent and electing to participate. You also want a connected system that is connected to the care providers so that as a parent, you're not having to go chase down receipts to adjudicate claims like you do have to today and connectivity with payroll providers too to facilitate setting up deductions and reimbursements and things like that. So all those parties to those transactions stand to generate funds in some way. So your parents can save a fair amount of money, that $1,700 from before, the employers can save the, the matching FICA taxes, and the care providers were actually providing an incentive by paying them a piece of the, the tax savings as well. So they can generate a new revenue stream just by helping us to get the word out and by using the platform as well. How we're different, our difference is our, our laser focus on dependent care FSAs. There's a lot of players that offer access to DCFSAs, but if you go to any one of those websites, you'll have a hard time even finding DCFSAs on those websites. They do this plus 20 other things. So we all do DCFSA administration. That's kind of table stakes as far as I'm concerned. We offer some unique features that make us very different and special. Dynamic pricing means that we don't have to you know, worry a small employer about whether they're gonna spend more than they save with something like this or if there'll be any interest or not. We only charge them if we generate tax savings. Tying with the school year open enrollment makes it easier for parents. Sharing the tax savings with both care providers and care champions, which I'll talk about here in a second, is unique. And integrations with payroll providers is also unique. So the market for this product process is large and growing. So back when DCFSAs came to be, about half the population had two working parents. Now that's like two thirds of the population. That's like 48 million working parents in the country. And average care costs for the year are shockingly close to $15,000 a year. I hope none of you have to like resonate with that too much, but I do, times three. Um, so that means the average foregone, missed out on uh, tax savings are, for individual working parents, $17.4 billion per year in unclaimed, unrealized tax savings. Their employers have another $4.7 billion per year that they're missing out on by not having a plan like this. So it's a big opportunity. So where are we right now? Where are we now? We've made a tremendous amount of progress over this, the course of this plan, uh, or this program. Uh, we have in 20 beta testing clients. We built a minimally viable product. Admittedly, there's a little bit of manualness going on in the management of that product right now, but we built it. We have all these clients signed up. They represent about 500 employees. We're shooting to have 50 participants, which is a very deliberately small amount in the first year. We want to learn a lot through this process, and we want to make sure when we're building, we're building something very specific to those needs. And we want to get to 100,000 participants by seven years from now. So 
that feels like a worthwhile goal. And we're going to need the distribution partners to pull that off. We already have a number that we've talked to. NFP, the company that acquired me, is very interested in this. They have two payroll vendors, a national dependent care provider of services, and then a national traditional administrator. And they're all literally ready to do business with us as soon as we're ready for them. And it's that relationship right now. We've also discovered this whole new world of dependent care software providers, which I didn't know existed, but they have huge networks of dependent care network uh, providers, and they could really help us ramp up our, our growth. The one that I was most excited about, though, is our care champions. So this, to me, is uh, stay-at-home moms and dads that stay at home because they have kids to take care of and they need flexibility of their work schedule, but wouldn't mind making a couple extra dollars on the side. If they sign up about 1,000 participants in a plan, they can make about $30,000 a year, and I can't wait to deliver my first of those checks. If we get to where we want to go, in addition to getting, generating about $17 million in revenue and $8 million in profits over seven years, we can generate $750 million in savings to working families, huge, $2 million to their employees, $3 million in new revenue to both care providers and care champions along the way. And again, that's something I'm very excited about. Our team includes myself and my now not with me ch children, <laughs> both off in college right now, Sophie and Max, and a great advisory board of also similarly working parents with businesses that they've started up in related spaces. They've been wonderful, and I am looking for a full-time operations support person right now. My ask, uh, $10,000. Uh, I've found from the, the beta test clients, everybody loves our videos, but we've only produced two of them at this point. We gotta do 22 more. We've already scoped them all out. We just need to pay for them, and that's what I'm hoping y'all can help me with. Uh, so thank you very much for letting me introduce Dependent Cares, and thank you for helping me and Dependent Cares help working parents keep some more money in their pockets. Sorry, I was so excited about finishing, I didn't realize we had this. Thank you. <laughs> I see that you said that it was about a saving of $400 uh, yep. per employee for the employer. Mm -hmm. yep. How much are you charging the employer for the service? Yes, that's a great question. So they save 7.65% in matching FICA taxes. We charge 5.65% for the service. So we ensure that the employer is going to still save some 2%, not 7%. So we're gonna charge them, of that $400 in savings, we charge them about 300 and change. Most of the employers we don't find are super price sensitive on the cost of this. Like it's normally a net neutral cost to them. The ones that offer it today and present it today, they're excited about the fact that we're taking better care of their people. Yeah. It's to retain the employees. The ones that don't offer it today, yeah. that are stuck on price, are, sign are excited. Like my 20 betas are all never provided DCFSAs before. Yeah. So I'm my company, I offer every single benefit there is. Yeah, you know, we match. You. I got to give you my card when we're finished. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. And uh, this was something that has never been brought to my attention. So I am continually shocked. As somebody who does what I do and lives the life that I've lived, I'm continually shocked that like putting DCFSA as a second slide and explaining what it was wasn't on my radar until I talked to 100 people. And they're like, what is that? Like, wow. So, yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned 20 uh, participants at yes. the moment that you have spoken to. So what have you learned from them that will allow you to move from 20 to 500 as, as the next You know, so, so much. That's like a phenomenal question. Uh, I thought it was like super small that I was shooting for, but I'm so glad I didn't like really open myself up to more than that. I'm, I'm like literally having 20 employer conversations day by day, 50-ish, we're not quite there, 50-ish employee conversations every day. And the amount of feedback that I've gotten from them on like rubber hits the road stuff is just really invaluable. So like that is informing the development of the product. It really is. So uh, I guess I made a few bad guesses along the way, but I've been very much informed by it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Tom. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, our next team, Adele Colson and Cody McKiernan. And the mentors were Desiree, Desiree alums and Trent Dang and, their, and Ivy Robinson. 
and their company is Art to Action. All righty, howdy y'all. We are so excited to be here with y'all today. And yes, just so excited. Thank y'all for like swimming here to get here. Um, yeah. <laughs> My name is Adele. I'm Cody. Again, thank you all for coming out today. Super excited to have you all here. A lot of beautiful faces in the room, great energy out here. So we're excited to pitch to y'all. Let's get it. Say goodbye to empty entertainment and embrace event activism. We are Art to Action, a New Orleans-based collective reimagining the way arts and culture can be transformative for our communities. What we do is host concerts, events, and flea markets for social justice causes using art as a means of advocacy to create a better future. There's a problem. Look at the statistic right here. Our generation wants more than just going to any old concert or event. They want something new, something innovative, something that will make a difference. I want everyone to look at the top left of the corner of the screen. See that research is spelled wrong. I noticed that this morning, but that is because spelling is not my strong suit. But <laughs> manifesting a vision that includes activism and entertainment is. For real, it is. And uh, <laughs> so we conducted a massive survey where 100%, we were shocked by this information, but 100% of people said that there needs to be a bridge between artistry and activism. And that bridge doesn't, doesn't exist, and the numbers don't lie. Art to action is the solution. Everything that we're about is building a community using art and entertainment in order to grow a community together and essentially just keep building and supporting social justice causes. Here are some of the events that we've already started. So Loino Flea Market 2021 is where it all began. Um, we had an attendance count of over 250 people, over 30 vendors, and we were able to raise $1,000 for the Loyola Student Hardship Fund, which was um, specifically designed for um, Hurricane Ida relief, but it was also for COVID relief. We then scaled it the next year. In 2022, we had the Loino Flea Market again. And with the support of our community, we had the attendance go to over 500 people, over 40 vendors, and we donated over $2,500 to local and international efforts. And we plan to grow even more coming soon this December. Mm -hmm. Here are some others. We had Stove Rave, and this was a really cool collaboration with Second Harvest Food Bank and the Lower Lander Center. And what I love about this event is that we also had a supply drive. So we were able to, um, people were donating things, and then all that went to Second Harvest as well. Last dance, the last dance was the last event of the semester last year. And that happened on the night before my class of 23. Loyola graduation, so it was just an incredibly special night. And it was our largest age range with ages 8 to 87. And um, we were able to donate over $500 to March for Our Lives and the Human Rights Campaign, even though we had less than, five, um, less than 100 people there. <laughs> In terms of our business model, there's many ways that we're going to be generating revenue through these events. But one of the most important ones that I want to point out is strategic partnerships. We're going to be working with like-minded companies and organizations and influencer endorsements in order to get our concerts from one scale to the next in a monumental setting. We want to make it clear that our passion and our goal as a business is to pay our artists and our workers a fair wage and support the causes that we champion. An integral part of our business is giving away part of our profits, which is unlike many other businesses. But we think that that's what makes us valuable. We grow dependently with our community. Mm -hmm. Our target audience. This is what we like to call the bluesers. Now, we're talking about a young adult demographic that they got the blues. Mm -hmm. all, all week, they're working hard, whether they got a job or they're in school studying, and they want to let loose. And they want to let loose in an event. Just take a look at <laughs> one of these notes here. We got tons of these. People who reached out to us having gone to one of our events and were impacted and moved by it. And so what we want to do is continue throwing these events. All of these people, the bluesers that we're talking about, they love music, they love festivals, they love events, but they also want to be a part of something that's bigger than themselves, which is essentially why we're all here, why you're all here. We have a great market opportunity. Entertainment is such a valuable part of our culture. And we saw that during the, the 2019, the COVID-19 pandemic, that we didn't have that connection. We weren't able to be part of that crowd. So 
since then, the market has drastically increased, and we don't think that there's a limit for how far the media entertainment industry can reach. Yeah, no, there is no limit. And look where we're standing right now. In New Orleans, there's 130 festivals every year. Mm -hmm. That's roughly one every three days. And only five of these festivals support a cause. But we can continue growing these festivals. And, and, and none, of the direct, none of them are directly related to arts and social justice, which is what ours are going to be related to. My name is Adele Colson. I'm an art activist, and I have been a performance artist all my life. I have been a national gun violence prevention activist and speaker since I was 16 years old, and that is why I founded Art to Action, combining my passion for artistry with activism. And I'm Cody McKiernan. I'm a musician from New York. I'm also intertwined in the music industry realm and the entertainment industry. And um, I got a band down here called the Coda Dosa Collective. We've been playing shows since I got here in 2021. And uh, yeah, I'm a philosophy major and a junior. Um, so this all started when I came back to campus. We were, I was sent home as a freshman um, because, of the because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, when I got back, my campus used to be so vibrant. People were singing. There was jazz. And when I got back, it was eerily quiet. My community had stopped singing. Tragically then, my, I was personally impacted by gun violence. So I knew that I needed to find a way to heal with my community and bring awareness to a cause that had always been import important to me. That's when Adele reached out and asked my band to play our first show down here, which was at Loino's first flea market. And since then, we've played 50 plus shows, but that essentially was the start of Art to Action. We are seeking $10,000 to promote our artistic and altruistic endeavors. We have a lot of st um, startup costs that you can see, but our mentor, Trent Dang, who works in large event production, assured us that after three shows is approximately when we'll begin to make enough money to reinvest back into the business and keep it investing on its own. But we need you to get started. Big picture is that we want to enact policy change on a national level through arts advocacy. Our bluesers will become the generation that will become the majority of electorate in this decade. There has never been a better time to change the world. And we're just getting started, y'all. We want to thank our mentors. Without them, none of this would have been possible, who helped us take this from, they helped us form our LLC and take art to action from passion project to business. And while it's impossible to thank everybody who's been a part of this process, what we can do is thank all of you for being here and give you guys an opportunity to join our cause and share this vision with us. Essentially, we're trying to take these shows from a small scale to a large scale, monumental. So yes, thank you all for being here. If you have any questions, you, um, comments, solicitations, you can contact us right here and pull out your phones, follow us on Instagram at Art to Action Co. And we thank you all for being here. A new era of event innovation begins. And if you don't believe us, just listen to our bluesers. Thank you. I can go first. So you, you, um, you ask 10,000 and you say like staff, talent, venue, can you be more specific? Are you going to rent a venue where this venue is located? Uh, for, uh, what's the capacity of the venue? If you're going to have a talent, so who is the, going to be a musician, a marketing person, uh, I don't know, technical officer? Uh, be more specific. What, what well, are you asking for? Right now, I'm a kind of a one-woman show. Cody helps, but um, we use local. We, we've started this just with local bands who haven't asked us to pay them. So that's why we're asking for this ten thousand dollars so that we can begin to pay the artists for their work. Because I feel like a lot of people don't understand the weight of of artistry, and and we really do need to support our artists. Um, profits are very variable based on the event, the venue. Most of those concerts were thrown in my backyard, so we didn't have a venue cost associated. But since then, we've been reaching out to venues like the Howlin' Wolf, um, Gaza Gaza, places like that. Um, and we, yeah, we have three events lined up um, coming soon, but yes. Also, essentially, because of the success of those events that we had in the backyard, we know that this can get taken to the next level in a place like Gaza Gaza, Tibetina's, Howlin' Wolf, you know, one of these major venues that we can rent out for a night and throw a major, you know, event. 
Y'all mentioned the money that you've been able to give away, and congratulations and thank you for doing that. How do you make money? We don't. <laughs> That's why we need money to sustain our business. I pretty much just, I gave away all the profits to, to putting on these shows. I, would, I just broke even. So I would pay all the staff, I would pay the artists, and then whatever money was left over, I donated all of it. So now I know that that's not as sustainable. Ben & Jerry's is like a philanthrop like philanthropic company, and they donate around 7.5%. I'm looking to donate maybe around 10 to 15% because our business is solely focused on giving back. Thank you. Right, thank you all very much. Good Appreciate job. you. Good job. You got a button? Thank you. All right. So our eighth presenter, um, and definitely not our last, uh, well, least <laughs> um, is Joy Jolly. Shaw and Jada Martin. Their mentors were Mark Mayer and Jenny Hong, and the company is Let's Talk Media. Hi, we are Let's Talk Media, a social media management company that elevates brands using customized social media solutions. You might be asking, what do we do? <laughs> well, we help businesses go viral and use social media to grow their business while being cost effective. We don't do this one size fits all social media strategy, but we think outside of the box. I'm Joy Shaw. I have 16 years of experience. I am the media strategist for Let's Talk Media, and at the age of 16, I made $4,000 just doing social media services. How, you may ask, I cracked the algorithm. I learned how to predict the trends and know what was going on in the times. After that, I graduated with two degrees and started working for several different businesses, owning and crafting my craft. I met Joy when I was in eighth grade. You may think, what is this 12-year-old, <laughs> now 19, doing up here thinking she has experience? Well, Joy began to teach me social media, graphic design, and predicting trends. And since then, um, I've had over six years of experience and worked for over seven businesses. And now we have Let's Talk Media. The problem. How do I go viral? How can I make money with social media? We get these questions often from clients that come in who are frustrated and don't know where to start or how to grow. Social media can be overwhelming and time consuming. The solution, you need a plan. Our solution is posting new content that your target audience is looking forward to seeing and using our strategies to monetize on all social media platforms. We do the research and we come up with the plan to help you grow your business and then you go viral. Our customers, small business and personal brands. Between three to 10 employees, two to five years of business, under the age of 45, 100,000 to 700,000 of yearly revenue. We have a client who's a life coach. She came to us with no social media presence, with a budget for the paid ad budget of $500,000, of, sorry, $5,000 a month. We increased her social media presence, gaining over 144,000 followers, monetized on all platforms, and developed products, 50 products, increasing a, a new stream of revenue for over 150,000. We did this all without tapping into her ads budget. We did this all in one year. We also help her to increase, increase her conversion rates. She has now an email list of 8,000 plus people and an event attendance rate of 1,500 plus people. We also helped her to develop a customized app that has 35,000 subscriptions. It wasn't magic, it was the model. 
What we do for one, we can do for all. This is a universal strategy that can be tailored made and custom to any industry. We found out that our referral list is gold for us. We now have a customer list of clients who are eager to work with us. By activating these partnerships with Catalyst, who has already connected pending agreements with us for a fast food chain restaurant, a branding agency, and a consulting firm. They also want to become, want us to become their number one social media connect. Businesses currently spend $6,000 to $10,500 per month on social media marketing, spending about 25% of their budget for paid media. That's between $72,000 and $126,000 per year. Here we have our top services along with the top three social media agencies in our sector. We could not find any social media, um, at, between the top three, we couldn't find any that did full production services that were also cost effective. Our plans are catered to the needs of the business. From doing video editing to content creations and services like strategies and brand sessions, we can tailor made any one of these plans to fit the needs of each client. Our financial projections are here. So between year one, we're looking at about $210,000, year two, $372,000 and year three, $744,000. Between year one and year three, we almost tripled our financial projections. And if each premium client that we have was to come with us, we, we average about $100,000 if they go up. Why integrate AI? Less time, less cost, and better results. It takes us 11 hours minimum to do one project for a client versus AI doing 10 minutes maximum. We do these routine tasks all the time, and it takes us 11 hours to, for one client. By taking our strategy of clearing our wait list, we can literally take and bring our business to the next level. Our ask. $15,000. With the use of this money, we'll be able to upgrade our website, purchase new AI software, and clear our wait list and open to our potential five new clients. Thank, Thank you. you. Connect with us and let's talk media. So you showed some data that said how many, uh, like 144,000 new followers on social media for that client. Mm -hmm. How are you managing the and uh, identifying the level of engagement on the, that client? And if those followers are uh, brand loyalists, if they're active, that kind of thing. So once you monetize um, all social media platforms, once you go to that level, they actually give you that engagement. Um, we kind of take it a step further and we download it all. We have a software that, which is also an AI, that will literally take and kind of spit out that data very easily and quickly for you. So what kind of engagement? And, um, oh. We uh, monitor the engagement by sales. What kind? You, you say what kind specifically? Yes. Uh, so as far as the engagement of that client with 144,000 new followers, mm -hmm. um, are those followers, you know, buying? I know we saw an increase yes. in sales. Yes. So um, about 30% are buying as of today. Um, we actually just went viral, so it kind of shipped everything up. Um, now we're at 60% as of today. Well, a couple of hours ago. <laughs> Uh, you mentioned the application of AI, yes. and then you mentioned using this money to buy AI software. Yes. So does your product use AI now? So we currently use AI for copywriting and video editing. We would like to take it a step further to do those other um, routine tasks. Good. Thank you. Is there anything proprietary about that, or you're using 
Or you're just looking for license fees to use specific AI tools? Um, it's actually just um, the finances. Um, so we have done the research. We have figured out which ones we like, which ones we don't, which ones work well for us. And we have everyone set. We just need the finances to go ahead and pull the trigger. Okay. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned $150,000. Uh, how many clients uh, do you need to make it up? And would this 10 minute job of AI, does it mean one, is it 10 minutes per client? So 10 minutes AI yes, job, per, 10 per minutes client. per client. Correct. And so how, how, many, how many clients do you need to reach 250K in the first year? When we did the math, if we had, uh, I think it was five premium clients, two at the very minimum, and then um, three at the maximum, then we could reach that goal pretty easily. Altogether, I think it was 14. Well, I want to thank all of our eight teams today. Amazing, amazing work. Amazing. Can you please thank him again? Please? And what you don't see is that in May, all of these companies were in that room next door. And they're all trying to explain to us what their company, what their idea is, where they're trying to go. And where they are today is a universe different. And so um, I, it just really shows the hard work that they all put in and all of the support that our mentors and our speakers contributed to them to get to this point. So I am incredibly impressed. So the next step, I'm going to invite our judges first to come through and um, then once they have left and they are getting their own food, we're going to get them fed first and then we're going to sequester them back in, uh, in the innovation lab. And uh, when, uh, then I think what, it's eight, it's, it's 8.20 right now. Whoa, well, just give us your, no yeah, you have to. So um, we will be back here. I think uh, we'll try to make it in about 30 minutes, okay? We're going we're gonna to arm wrestle. This is going to be tough. But we will be back um, here to do the award ceremony, I hope, in about 35 to 40 minutes. But in, in the meantime, get yourself some food, enjoy the drinks, and have some fun. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you all. You guys want those? Yeah. Yeah. It's time for the exciting part. On the stage? Beg your pardon. I'm sorry. Why do I need to join you? Your, your name's on the check. No. I don't. I, <laughs> no, okay. You'd rather not. That's fine. It's up to you. Y'all do. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. The moment you've all been waiting for. Well, before we start all of this, I want to first say a few things. Everybody who got to this level, you should expect that you have succeeded and that you are stars. And it is incredibly painful for me. Yes, yes. Woo, 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 woo. Absolutely. And if you don't get money today, we are here to help you. As some of them, as some of the judges said that they had people that they could connect you to for potential business and all other kinds of stuff. So don't feel disheartened. Remember, you're, if you, no matter how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get up that makes a success. So uh, you're all a success by being here. And no matter what, we are here also at the Center for Entrepreneurship and Community Development to continue working with every one of you to continue your success. So please, please know that. So. I will give you the, the first check. We have two, tw um, we have a tie for first place and a tie for a second place, essentially. So I will give this to the dean to announce. Okay, congratulations to Marcel, New Orleans. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
put that in your hands. We'll stand next to you. And we want our big checks back when we're done. <laughs> yeah, hey, friendly reminder, we need those big checks back. Those are not cheap. We would like those back. Thank we'll you. We'll trade it for the real thing at the end. But you take all your family pictures first. OK, next, uh, next at the same level, dependent care. <laughs> Okay, so the next is Neurospace for $5,000. And certainly, last but not least, handoffer. Yes! You did it again. So those that did not get um, a, a cash award today know that you are still here. I'm here to help you and help. And we also have mentors uh, and judges that want to, that may have businesses for you. So uh, you know this is just one little step. So realize that we're here for you. You are winners, every one of you. So have a good evening and a wonderful weekend. Thanks again, everybody.